The truth is, if you want to apply for a machine learning or an AI PhD at these top schools like Berkeley, MIT, or Stanford, or work as an AI researcher at DeepMind, Google Brain, or Meta, it's an unspoken requirement that you need publications at a top AI conference. And in most of these job descriptions for these industry research positions, they explicitly state them in the requirements. So if you're interested in becoming an AI research scientist, what can you do earlier on in your undergrad career to set yourself up for success in order to eventually publish at a top journal? I'm going to tell you the story behind how I published at one of these top conferences as an undergrad computer science major. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my research journey behind leading up to the publication and the prior experiences I had so that you're able to get a better understanding of what it takes to get into these conferences, but to also what it takes to become an actual AI research scientist as a career. When I was a freshman starting out in college as a computer science major, one of the popular fields out there was AI. And at the time, this was even before ChatGPT, AI was becoming popular and popular. A friend introduced me to the AI club, which I then started to actually do research with. And through working with the students there and through an advisor, we got to actually publish two papers in AI and medicine journals. Specifically, I got to work with projects involving lung cancer image detection, as well as working with patient and radiogenomic data. And through that research experience, that got me my first taste into how AI research actually works, through actually learning how to format a paper properly, and through going through the publication process and the many months of revisions and all the, all the nonsense that it takes to publish an AI research paper, I got a better idea of how an academic career looks like. So then I used that research experience as background to then apply to a summer research program that my school had specifically for freshmen. And after getting into that program, I signed up to do research with a finance professor because he was a professor that really needed someone with AI experience. And through working with him full time over the summer, I got an even better idea into how an actual career as a researcher works. And at the time I was pretty sold on doing a PhD after graduation. Through that summer, I not only taught myself a lot of technical skills, like how to research financial reports and how to use TensorFlow and a lot of other Python libraries, but I also got to make a research poster which I not only presented at my school, but I also got to present at the Harvard and Yale undergraduate research conferences from which I made videos on. And the best part was I got to go to those conferences fully paid for by my school. And through those conferences, not only was it cool to just visit the campuses of Harvard and Yale, but also I got to meet some of the smartest people I've ever met and met a lot of lifelong friends that have really helped me and inspired me throughout my personal career. While from that summer freshman year, I didn't get a publication, those poster presentations still gave me the confidence along with my previous publications to reach out to one of the more well-known AI professors at my school who was known for publishing at these top conferences very consistently. After a cold email, he liked my background and I ultimately started doing part-time research with him throughout the school year as well as over my summer internship on my job. And through working with his PhD student, after learning a lot of the math and equations behind the process we were trying to create, we actually got to implement them and run them on a GPU, which I got to learn a lot about how to properly manage resources and properly set up model training experiments with Hugging Face, weights and biases and a few other tools, as well as many general NLP libraries in Python. I also got to learn about token and sentence entropy, which became the main source of inspiration behind our uncertainty metric that we invented. And a year later, after two rejections, we finally got into a top conference, ACL 2024, which was pretty cool to learn about and also to see the other LLM papers that were being published there as well. But before that paper got accepted, I did another research program during my junior year with a professor from Brown University, where I worked with him on computer graphics research, and I worked with a group of students to use LLMs to generate technical and scientific diagrams, which we then later compiled into a poster and then got to present at the Brown Undergraduate Research Conference, which was another cool place to meet other people my age who were also really cool scientists. And then after that program at Brown, I eventually later that summer got the notification that we published into a top journal. 
And all the lessons that I learned from AI research and through going through the research process is very applicable to a lot of other skills. Even though I'm not going to go and be a researcher, I'm going to then still use a lot of the exploration and knowledge and knowledge finding skills that I learned through literature review, as well as technically implementing a lot of very difficult models and programs via code. But my four main takeaways for anyone who's interested in getting into a top AI conference it's very important that you work with professors who publish at top AI conferences. And it might be hard to get a hold of some of these professors if you don't have them at your school. And for me, it took like about maybe like two years of doing research and being really interested in reading about it in my free time to be able to build the confidence and experiences to reach out to these professors since a lot of these professors are very busy. If you have prior publications or any kind of poster demonstrations or any kind of research experience, it's super, super helpful, especially when you're reaching out to them cold. I also learned that academia is a lot slower moving than industry. I know there's hundreds of new LLM papers that are being published every day, but know that a lot of those papers also took probably a few months to actually get published. And yet they are submitted on archive right away but they still take a lot of time for them to formally get into a journal and to go through that whole process. And I personally like the fast paced nature of industry and business a little more. I also learned that research is more for those who really enjoy creating knowledge more for the sake of knowledge rather than it being applied. I learned through the research process that I'm more of someone who likes to apply what he learns to an actual use case or business problem. but. Researchers really like to just think about theoretical models because it's really cool to think about them. And some of them are really cool, especially a lot of these neural network papers and state of the art research. It's very cool to read about, but I personally like research that's more applicable and more experimental. And the fourth main lesson that I learned is that I'm more interested in applying my math and computer science knowledge to a more practical area in something like a business problem. The reason is because Kind of like how an artist likes to see how his art is being used, I like to see how my tools and my products and solutions are being used. And that, to me, gives me a lot of motivation to create them. Not that research isn't also being used. There's a lot of very famous repositories out there, something like Bits and Bytes and Meta's Llama, which are open sourced and used by many researchers that were created by researchers. So academia and industry are kind of these two different worlds, but they do overlap, especially in the world of AI, where you can be a researcher in academia, but you could also work in an industry lab, or you could be an ML engineer in industry, but also working on a research team. And that is part of the beauty of AI research. And oftentimes, unfortunately, to get into those positions, you need publications at a top conference. And that's where getting as much research experience as you can through a lot of these research programs, whether you're an undergrad or grad student or getting involved with labs, even if you're a post-grad student, you can still get involved with AI research and there's a lot of online communities for you to do so and to help you ultimately gain as much experience and credibility as you can to be able to reach out to these professors at these top institutions and who publish at top conferences consistently. And if there's one thing, one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that through the accumulation of these experiences and publications and poster presentations and technical skills that you gain as a researcher, that is what gives you the credibility to be able to be confident in yourself that you are a world-class researcher. And that is what it takes to ultimately get into these top AI labs and top companies. You need to prove that you are who you say you are. Thanks for watching my video and if you enjoyed and want to learn more practical step-by-step -step tactics behind how to actually reach out to some of these professors as well as templates for different emails you can use, check out my other video where I talk about how I actually published AI research at some of these top Ivy League universities without even going to them. And if you're interested in learning about some of my other AI projects and your research, go check out the rest of my channel as well. I think you'll like it.